There were three things I loved as a kid. Video games, wrestling, and McDonald's. This video has nothing to do with McDonald's, so I don't even know why I brought that up. Anyway, my love for video games and wrestling would eventually lead me to playing wrestling video games. Smackdown, No Mercy, even the shitty games like WWF Warzone. I loved it. My uncle would occasionally download games for me to play on his computer. I don't know how he found this stuff, but he eventually found a game called Big Bumps with a Z at the end, so you know it's some extreme shit. Big Bumps was a game where you take control of a wrestler and just jump through shit for points. This is for Jigglers and Jigglets. Woo! Woo! Simple, yes, but I loved it. I would eventually look at the site where it came from and notice the person who made it is called M. Dicky, which I thought was hilarious because PENIS! Now it just makes me think of the knuckleballer. M. Dicky also created numerous other games over the years. I mean, seriously, you name it, he's created it. Prison Escape? Yep. Soccer? Yeah. Boxing? Uh-huh. A talk show? Uh, sure. A game where you live in the same time as Jesus and can get crucified next to him? The fuck? M. Dickey would eventually move on to the mobile scene, and instead of creating shit like this, he made MMA games, superhero simulations, and school simulations. When he announced that he would be making a new wrestling game for the Switch, I was interested, to say the least. As soon as you dive into Wrestling Empire, you already see what makes M. Dickey games so special. The games are chock full of freedom and experimentation. You see this immediately when setting up an exhibition match. You want a match with a cage? Boring. We can do a little bit better than that. How about a match with no ring? Or one in an office? Or how about a 58 man over the top battle royal that has a cage around the ring and dozens of tables and explosives that explode and spread fire all over the place? Yeah, that sounds insane and doesn't make any kind of damn sense. But you can do it. The match types are crazy, but this game innovates and does stuff that WWE games don't even do. Injuries can happen mid-match. You could stand on the barricade. You could pull off these sweet double team moves. A lot of moves can be chained into submissions or pins. You could toss people out of the ring with throws. You can toss people into the ring with throws. You can counter moves into other moves. You can dual wield weapons. You can rebuild tables. You can move while taunting. You have commentators commentating. You could just run over there and hit them if you want to. You even have the virtual fans. The options you have are like COVID. You get them right off the bat. The game runs at a smooth 60 frames per second too. Even when I was telling you about that 58 man blah 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 monstrosity I was telling you about. Did I mention that this was made by one guy? While I really really love this game, I have to address the lackluster core gameplay. M. Dickey has taken inspiration from wrestling games like No Mercy. Mercy, why am I saying it like that? M. Dickey has taken inspiration from wrestling games like No Mercy, and that's a fantastic thing to take inspiration from. But this isn't even close. And if you're expecting it to be No Mercy, you're going to be severely disappointed. Firstly, matches can be so slow. And it can be awkward considering there's no commentary or music to drown out the dead air. The AI is pretty bad, but the worst is the referees. Refs just do whatever the hell they want. Climb up random stuff, picking up weapons and making counts with the weapons in their hands, not getting to a pin in time, attacking you for no reason. It's a damn free for all at times with these guys. There are also moments where guys are just flipping and flopping all around with no explanation as to why it's happening. It's like controlling the greased up deaf guy or a damn fall guy. The most annoying thing that there is, to my knowledge, there is no reverse button. Counters do happen, but from what I've looked up, reversals are completely random based on stats. Honestly, all that other stuff is kind of fine with me because it's funny and it gives the game a certain charm, but having no reversals just sucks no matter how you look at it. I mean, you could be locked in submissions for 30 seconds at a time and feel like no matter what button you press or how you press it, you can't get out of it. The best strategy is to just stand above your opponent and beat them senseless with a weapon, and you'll do massive damage because they can't really counter it because there's no counter. You could do that to get countouts too. 
By no means do I hate this game, but if you're looking for the next No Mercy, or hell, if you're looking for the next Day of Reckoning, you're not gonna find it here. The strength of this game is in its freedom of control and its career mode. Speaking of career mode, this is where you spend most of your time and it's the deepest career mode in any wrestling game ever. You start off by picking your guy and this is the part where I want to talk about the roster. The roster is huge and there are multiple promotions in the game. The wrestlers themselves are just real life wrestlers with their names slightly changed around now i'm not fluent in copyright or anything like that but how can you get away with this you mean to tell me i can make a game with tony hawk in it but i just name him tommy eagle and i can get away with it something interesting to point out though is that kane is purple for some reason I guess they didn't want to mess with him. I changed some of the names to the real names, and once you pick your guy, you're off to wrestling school. Your goal is to sign with the company because wrestling school doesn't pay you anything despite making tens of thousands of dollars on some of these shows. Cheap bastards. Different promoters will eventually make you contract offers. These can vary heavily and have certain stipulations. You can be paid in advance, you can have your weekly salary, how long the contract is, and your clause, which could be something like a guaranteed title shot, healthcare, creative control on your character, or even a jobber that gets paid for losing matches. I chose Al Snow because what does everybody want? Low jobs. I signed with Maple Leaf Grappling, who wanted to sign me as a jobber who only gets paid for losses. Makes sense because I am Al Snow after all. But I renegotiated my contract to get paid no matter what. The story of Al Snow is an odd one that perfectly showcases why you should play this game. I won my debut match, and after every match, you get a, I guess, a, a newspaper of the news going around wrestling. From title changes to releases to contract negotiations to injuries to even deaths. That's right, people can die in this game. From either wrestling or natural causes, death can happen. This all makes the game feel like it's an actual career. Sure, the focus is on you since this is about you, but there's still stuff going on outside of your little bubble. My second match was against the British Bulldog who's like, blah, 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 this is my final match. I don't really care. Drop him right on his neck for the win. Now get the hell out of my ring. After the match, I'm told to take a day off because I have low health or whatever, but I refuse because I'm then backstage, some wrestler is offering to sell me painkillers. Events like this happen all the time. People can offer you painkillers to replenish your health, steroids to get a bigger head like Barry Bonds, offers to form a tag team, and offers to not beat the shit out of you for money. These decisions can be hard at the start of the game, because you could be like me and make less money than a teenager on a paper out. I probably should have taken the painkillers, but I want Al Snow to live past 60, so I'll decline. I have my match and I predictably get my ass beat. But none of that matters, because remember what I told you about dying? Well, Mean Gene is interviewing the big man upstairs now. Side note, every time somebody dies, the music goes into the slow-mo version of the main theme. I think it's supposed to be unsettling, but I thought I did something to the settings. Not Jim Cornette wants to pass down his legacy to a protege. I respectfully decline, but he isn't happy about it. Thank you, fuck you, bye, boom! Next, I have to do a 10-person battle royal that has not Jim Cornette in it. I eventually win the match. Then I have a match with Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, and not Cornette was the ref. This is one of the cool things about career mode because you can make legitimate rivalries based on the choices you make. So not Jim Cornette is my enemy now. I pin Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, but not Cornette slow counts me. One, two. And then he fast counts me. One, two, three. Backstage, Not Cornette tells me I have to raise my popularity up to 74 or I'm fired. I have another match with Steamboat and I choke him out, but Not Cornette tells the ref to restart the match. So I choke him out again, then the match is restarted again. Man, the fix is in. All because I didn't wipe his ass or whatever the hell he wanted. There's eventually a battle royal that I didn't win, and I didn't get my popularity up, so not Jim Cornette fired me. So I'm back at the wrestling school doing my unpaid internship. First match back at wrestling school, I have a match with Ahmed Johnson. He hurts his neck like 10 seconds into the match. Let me help you out with that. Good luck paying for treatment, man. 
The show got $29,000 in revenue and you'll see none of it. The coach wants to talk to me, not about me potentially crippling a man, but to talk to me about raising my stamina or I'm fired. Then I'm dressed like a greasy homeless man and he tells me to imitate Daniel Bryan, which is fitting because I have a submission match for the wrestling school title, which I didn't even know was a thing. There's so much going on. So I go into the match and I submit the guy in less than 30 seconds to become the new champ. Then I have a segment in the ring with the guy who just came back from injury. So I do what any other sensible person would do. I beat him half to death with a chair and then I suplex him out of the ring, which I'm pretty sure broke his freaking spine in half. Now I'm meeting the coach, not about killing a man, but about my stamina goal, which I did not meet. I thought Al Bryan's, uh, Daniel Snow, whatever the hell my name is, I thought his story was coming to an end here, but he let it slide. I'm assuming because I'm the champ. Then later on I have an interview. Interviews ask you questions about yourself and if you get them right you earn more popularity. Where was this when I needed it in Maple Leaf Grappling? After a couple more weeks of matches, out of all people Dana White has a meeting with me and says, I think you're a fucking idiot. He offers me a contract with a really great salary. He must have been impressed with me crippling others. I sign the deal and then he eventually makes me change my strikes. I can't say no because there was no creative control on my contract. Do you always change how people will fight Dana? Is this why Connor lost? I have a couple matches, then I eventually have a six man table match, which is my favorite type of UFC fight. So less than 10 seconds into the match and I hurt my back. Damn, I'm screwed. There's no way I can beat everyone in this match. I can barely stand. However, everyone starts turning into bumbling morons and they start eliminating themselves one by one. <laughs> It eventually comes down to me and Jack Swagger, and I almost put him away, but he puts me through the table eventually. It was a legendary performance. Heroes get remembered, but legends never die. Except he actually frickin' died. My capture card didn't get a shot of the newspaper for some reason, but he frickin' died, man. Poor Al Snow, Brian, Sin, whatever. He wasn't a bad man. Sure, he crippled some people, but haven't we all? And that's M. Dickey's career mode. It's really fun and I hope I displayed how crazy things can get along with all the other possibilities. I didn't even really scratch the surface here. It's without a doubt the deepest career mode in any wrestling game. And like I mentioned before, it was only made by one person. M. Dickey has stated more will be added via free updates, including a free row mode. I'll be on the lookout for that. M. Dickey games are a special breed that you should experience. Don't go in expecting no mercy in terms of gameplay, and I think you'll find something really, really special here.